all the opportunities he can. He is hustling, he is doing his thing. If you've ever had a conversation with him, it's fantastic. Um, he really brightens up the room as well. So I wanted to invite Shoni to come up. I'm gonna pose two questions to him. Um, and after Shoni comes, we're gonna have Judy, we'll have some lunch, we'll have some surprises for you guys too. So Shoni, come on up. <laughs> so Shoni, can you share, you know, what are some of the resources and things that you're taking advantage of, your experience? I know you're leveraging all the resources out here. All right, wow. Okay, so, um, hi, my name is Shoni Monedel. I'm a student at Santa Monica College. I'm currently switching over from a media and film major to an interaction design major this year. Um, so, wow. Uh, first of all, I love everything about this meeting. I love what you guys are trying to do here. I love everything that you guys are talking about. And I found it extremely exciting to hear about the opportunities here as well, and that they're working directly with Santa Monica College already. It's um, something that I've been trying to cook up with my mentor, Kevin Clark, for a while, is how do we take all these various resources, educators, um, students, as well as um, various company representatives to create a pipeline or create a, a way in for students who have no experiences, or students who have some, to just get their foot in the door and start gaining those experiences to actually get a career pathway or get a job. So um, in terms of myself and the opportunities I've taken um, taken so far. Um, the very first opportunity I took was to become a part of a club at SMC. And um, I just joined the media club. And from there, I learned the skills of editing. I started with iMovie. And then from there, I started using Adobe Premiere Pro. I started doing interviews, started shooting little short clips with my club members. And I became the club president the following semester and was asked to take notes on a meeting covering um, the culture, cultural equity inclusion initiative at my college. And um, that's why I met Kevin Clark, Kevin Clark, <laughs> and I also met um, Richard. And um, from there, um, Kevin, I just wanted to know, how is it that, as a student, I didn't even know about all these conversations happening, deciding on the way that you're going to be handling students such as myself in the future, pathways open up for us. It was like, it, it was quite amazing that I didn't know any of this information yet. and. But I think the best, the best way to be ahead of the curve is to have the information to be ahead of the curve. So if you don't have that information, you can't really do anything. So uh, I was like, I want to do everything I can to be a part of this and learn as much as I can and try to hand out these free tickets to any students that are available to come and take advantage of all the opportunities that are available that they're not aware of. So um, from there, I worked together with Kevin and uh, with the media club, we mobilized to cover several events and interview a bunch of, um, as my mentor says, king makers, king and queen makers, as well as um, people of high status who can actually um, mobilize the resources to create those career pathways. So I worked together with him to cover these events, to interview these people, and to really help curate the conversation. And so we went to um, events like your Tech Connect, to Digital Hollywood, to at and Shape, we covered those events and created little short reels. Um, I met you there at 18. No, I met you at Digital Hollywood again. I got the chance to interview, and that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, from there, um, through Kevin, I was able to become a youth ambassador. So I applied for that um, opportunity, and it, it's been an amazing opportunity because I didn't understand how much work it took to create a program working with the LA County Arts Collective because there's just so many different things that you have to take into account from companies to resources to um, students what they have what they don't have whether or not they have the transportation needs whether or not they have the money whether or not they're homeless and there's just so many different things that you have to take into account and I wasn't thinking about that when I first initially started so my designs were very flimsy at best so when I um, started working with them in um, creating the new uh, arts educational uh, regional plan. Um, we went to various forms and um, in all the districts, LA County districts, to get a feel from the community there what it is that is really needed to create and design a new educational uh, regional plan that would actually help um, bridge all these different art forms, which there are a multitude of, 
from architecture to graphic design to video gaming to singing to uh, you know drum circles there's so many different arts that it's nuts so it's like spraying all that how do you do it how do you get kids aware of those things how do you get them interested in wanting to do it and so uh, from there I've just been working on that and while simultaneously doing that with Kevin um, I have been organizing different little units of students myself under his wing and uh, just volunteer groups to design programs and projects that would create more opportunities for students to come and get that awareness that we've been trying to get out. So uh, we worked and we uh, designed a uh, fitness app called FitQuest for the NFL and the American Heart Association for creating um, a, a basically an app that would help students and parents and educators work together to bring up the educational level in terms of fitness scores because they've been decreasing in years and uh, participation in sports have been decreasing in years so it's like how do you tackle that issue how do you tackle health so we were really researching and put that together and then from there we also went um, at Heartbeat Studios and talked about designing a program there for creating internship po possibilities for having students from Santa Monica and other community colleges and high schools have summer internships at Heartbeat Studios where they would be able to actually work together and uh, learn the skill sets that are needed on a film set from not just filming but creating props, storyboarding, you name it. And so um, from doing that we went to designing programs at events. So we went to events like Seagraph to get a feel for what an actual event looks like. Went to events like um, at t Shape again to look at what they had. And then from there, we designed a couple of booths, a couple of programs for Yomo and uh, for the Mobile World Congress. And um, we had the fortunate um, windfall, I should say, um, because even though you can design all these great things, the one thing that always stomps us every time is always resources, 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 and timing. So because there was no such short notice, none of the plans actually went to fruition except for one, and that was a major conference that we live streamed from Mobile World Congress with the help of Balance and um, with the help of another man by the name Lal Alexander. And we worked with Kevin Clark, a mentor, to put that all together. And through that, um, all these experiences, I think what, what that has helped me to come to a better understanding is, is that there is a lot of miscommunication in terms of the various different cultures of each company, the various different cultures of each community campus um, and university. Every, everybody has their own culture, their own standards, their own set of measurements, as you will, for getting into the door. And so it's how do you bridge all that complicatedness into one thing? And uh, one of the questions that you had asked of me was to think about what are some suggestions I would make for educators and for um, companies. And I'm um, sorry if I'm talking a lot. No. Uh, <laughs> so when I was thinking about that, um, design, I, from a student's perspective, there's only so much I can get because I don't know enough. Um, so I'm glad that I was here and I got to listen to everybody from Intercom and um, talking about what they were looking for. And uh, when I think back to all the interviews that I've had so far, it's very similar and I've sort of kind of narrowed it down to one thing that is very key across all the boards and that's adulting. So adulting 101 <laughs> is what I call it. I think that's the thing that is missing from education curriculum. It's adulting 101. Managing your time to looking up for resources to soft skills, how to be confident, how to talk, how to have direct eye contact, how to be readily available to listen. Because I was li how, as I was listening to this, I was like, none of the answers I created are really gonna work here now. You gotta think of a different answer. Um, bless you. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, uh, so one of the cool things as well is that I've been working with my mentor for the past two years, and now it's kind of come to the final culmination of just the past two years of interviewing designing, talking, coming to meetings like this, um, to start working on a program, more, more of a product than a program, but something that would bridge the gap amongst 
just all of the various different things. And um, so in terms of the actual end goal, which is creating a career pipeline, I think what's really needed is the opportunity to have that open discussion. So I think a part of the, the thing that I would suggest is keep having meetings like this, uh, first and foremost, have them as frequently as possible. Because um, when I think about designing a uh, career pipeline, one of the things that you also stumble into is keeping up to date with the constant changes in the industries. And one school that really does well at keeping up to date with those things is GNOME, a gaming um, school. Um, and what they do is that they have a bunch of different teachers that are always in the industry, always teaching. So no matter what standards change, they're always up to date because the teachers are always up to date with standards. So they're always up to standard and their students had a 100% um, drop rate into various companies last year and a 97% rate this year of placing students not into like, you know, hey, go get me that coffee, but to, hey, I need you to look at this, I need you to create that artwork, bring it back to me, hey, I need you to design that storyboard for this guy, et cetera, et cetera. They're actually doing what they were taught. So when thinking about a career pipeline in, in terms of that and curling up with your suggestions, I think the fastest one I can give you, other than the long-term one, is awareness campaigning. Awareness, awareness, awareness. I wouldn't be here if I didn't go to that meeting. I would have never known about any of this. And now it's because I became aware of it. So if you had meet awareness campaigns with teachers and educators working together, which is basically the product we're hoping to develop, is to bring in you, to get an understanding of you, the king makers, the queen makers, you the people who have the resources, to interview you and get an understanding of what your needs are, so that we can then translate that to a campaign Bring that to students, directly into the classrooms. Bring that awareness to them. Educate them on it. Get them those experiences they need and getting them into the, into the actual industry they're looking for. So I think that's one of the things that I needed. And the other one is adulting 101, which is just <laughs> learning those soft skills. It's learning what you need to know in order to actually get your foot in the door, such as Microsoft Office or basics of Photoshop or PowerPointing or just being able to talk like this to a group of people with tremendous power in the room. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, uh, I think that would be the, the suggestions that I would make. And then in terms of talking to business people, and companies and the like, I think that if you took the time to design a program where you take a set number of products or projects a year, and a percentage of those people that you're gonna have work on that project are going to be student interns, no matter how small it is, it's still a percentage. So whether it's five projects a year, 2% of the people working on it have to be student interns, and this is where you're gonna be getting them from, design that. And that would help tremendously in paving the way for getting a better understanding of what it really takes to get them into their door. Because right now there's not enough, well I should say sharing of the information of what it really takes. Um, and I think it's a, gonna be a trial and error process too. So I think that's what I would suggest to you, is just to begin the trial and error process to try and get an understanding of what it really takes to get people into career pathways. Thank you so much. Thank you for your <laughs> and so I get to close up. Uh, thank you all for coming, we really appreciate it. I know we had a great mix of uh, attendees from academia, I think some elected as well as industry, and so thank you for coming. And thank you very much, Intercom, for hosting us and the great panel. <laughs> and great information. Uh, uh, being an older executive, I think adulting 101 goes on for a lifetime, <laughs> just my opinion. But thank you, Jessica and Isabel. I'm Judy Kruger, Senior Director of Strategic Initiatives at LEEC. I also work on digital media and entertainment. Jessica works on the workforce side with our CCW program. I work on the capacity building side on policy and really what does it take to grow the business outside of workforce. But again, just to say one more time, we at LAEDC have the Center for Competitive Workforce, which is a, built out now in the second year to be a really robust program. 
it will be, it is a resource for educators as well as industry. So um, again, we can for point you to that website and that portal. We really wanna connect those pieces, but you can also talk to me about any policy issues as well as any business growth challenges. But again, thank you, thank you for coming. This is a council that meets quarterly, so the next one will be in about two or three months. Watch your emails, we'd love to have you attend. Thank you.